So this is the problem. You said this in the messaging, and you better not. You sabotage me, I will find you because I don't. I don't believe your. Uh, you have any right to be um, coy or or any in any way uh, uh, humble about what. Because yeah. even though you you know you you've given yourself the moniker of sort of the the. the you're the anarchist of the podcast. You're constantly trying to derail things for the purposes of comedy and whatnot. But, sure, sure. god damn, have you achieved some stuff from a relatively oh. humble vision of... Uh, and, like, everyone I've spoken to since. Alex said this, Ian said this, and Seb said this. Listen, we're not here unless it's Joe's vision that comes to fruition. And he believe, he believed it. He felt it in his soul that this is what we, what we <laughs> should be doing. And, like... This is what I'm saying. Like you, it's like well, come on. but no, but they they see an, a work ethic in you and a belief that seems to, have, and well, not yeah. seems, it has paid dividends. You guys have, I've seen you grow. It's been mental to watch. Sure, sure, yeah. You know, I'm just a great, great guy, and uh, I'm one of the best guys. So <laughs> <laughs> you're killing me here. Come on, like, give, can, can you? Ah, uh, never mind. Should, should we do the intro? Shall I big yeah, you up some let's more? Yeah, do the intro. Big me up. That's fine. Yeah. All right. We'll do. We'll call, do. call me one of the best guys. We'll, we'll do the intro up. and we'll yeah. big it up. So, um, so ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, um, welcome to this edition of the Halcyon Show. My name's Lauren Risley, as you might have guessed. How you doing? Today we have a very special guest. And if you like special guests, you should sign up to The Athletic, which, by the way, is uh, probably on a 30-day free trial at the moment on uh, the, the athletic, athletic.com forward slash TIFO. Uh, it's home to some of the world's best ja da 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 But um, it's brilliant, but only as brilliant as the man we're speaking to today. He is the executive producer for the UK video, sorry, for UK video for The Athletic, creative director and the sultry sound of the fabulous TIFO and TIFO IRL, but also... One of the most creatively brilliant and endearing, charming characters in online content today with a history and a backstory will no doubt inspire you to follow your dreams and one day achieve that elusive goal of annoying Alex Stewart. Raise a glass, please. It's Joe Devine. Hello. He's got a... Uh, I'm, actually, I'm actually the uh, managing editor now. I just haven't updated uh, my LinkedIn because I'm a cool guy. So. He's a cool... Yeah, he just keeps it real. He's, he watches... He, he listens to Stormzy albums. I, I have listened to a Stormzy album on occasion. Um, I had a conversation with my wife about Stormzy the other day. So, you know, <laughs> it, it has been known to happen. I see. I've, okay, I've never listened to a Stormzy I will never pretend to be cool in the slightest. I still think that music peaked in 2001 and you're not going to convince me any differently. But that's oh. fine. They say that about new new music, don't they? I think James, James Acaster did that, those books or those podcasts or whatever, listening to all the best music of 2016, 2017, which I haven't read them or listened to them, but it sounds like a, a novel idea. I too believe that music was good in the past, but I'm sure there's good stuff now. Uh, I just, uh, it's just not for me, is it? Or maybe for you. Well, you say that, but you might be uniquely qualified to have this conversation in a little while. But first, I have a question, and I need you to understand that this question came from, from a close personal source of yours why mm. are pubs so important who said this was it said i am not at Alex? liberty to divulge any information at this stage i need a, i need an answer from you joe divine this is the first question and you can't pubs with, without wanting to be exclusive about it because I, i'm with plenty of people in my life who don't drink uh, but pubs are the cornerstone of uh, of uh, of culture in britain and in a way that they 100 percent shouldn't be um, but, uh, you know, because I would say, um, the, for whatever reason, British and maybe Irish uh, people and men specifically have evolved to, uh, to not or have been sort of cultured to not express their feelings whilst sober. I think that's one of the reasons why pubs are such a, you know, a cultural cornerstone. And I love pubs specifically because uh, my family own a pub. And as a teenager, I spent many summers in the pub. My dad uh, ran it and, and worked there and lived there. Uh, and I think I've had lots of lovely conversations in pubs. I've seen different sides of people in pubs, bad sides as, as well as good, you know. Uh, and I think uh, the sad thing is that without them, and actually, you know, to make a serious point with the cost of living crisis and the energy crisis at the moment, I think something like 80% of pubs are in danger of potentially having to close their doors as a result of, um, of increased energy costs and like, you know, 
insane uh, bills as it relates to other things, particularly the amount of money that it costs pubs to even show football is like horrific. Most people don't know this, but you know, pubs in in, in central London of a of a reasonable size that have a, enough footfall will be paying you know thirty to forty thousand pounds a year to show the football. I think most people just imagine they get a a normal Sky Sports um, contract, and that's that's not the case. Uh, but without them, you know, and without your libraries where you're not really allowed to talk anyway. And, uh, you know, I suppose with fewer and fewer people uh, following particular religions or congregating at, uh, you know, churches or, you know, places of religious significance, there isn't really anywhere to go, is there? So I think that's why I think pubs are so important. Now, were you expecting me to answer the question that way? No, I was expecting, I wasn't expecting quite such a deep and existential answer consider because i agree with you i i'm of the opinion that the uh, a strong sense of community is needed in the country at the moment especially in times of strife when there's no one really to direct a lot of this animosity towards it's it's more about trying to cultivate a sense of community so that it isn't directed at each other i think you see evidence of that in the way people drive and the way people walk to work they're pap is that is that a family of six in that in that people carry up right well they're in my way it's like I get everything's tough, um, and if there are ways of alleviating that, I never considered that. I I am not a pub person. Pubs are uh, places where people congregate, and I avoid those at all costs. The cafe or a, or a coffee shop, however, sure. people mind their business and they they they're creative and they they meet to discuss things more uh, more generally speaking rather than yell. So I, yeah. that's that's. But that's, I never but where I never else thought can of the you go to be loud. You know, sometimes I think about like the gym. I go to the gym well, to, to, the to gym, yeah. You know. That's a quite a good one. But like, but I think you know, when was the last time you screamed as loudly as you could? About two weeks ago. Was it? Was it really? <laughs> In the privacy of your home, or did you? No, 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 no. Where, you, where were you screaming? Uh, it was. Uh, what was? Uh, so she was a nun, and uh, what was she doing? She was minding her business. <laughs> um, no. D- so I, I'm a very passionate, but I, I'm of the opposite opinion of because you're. I think you're right. People need the license to be able to express themselves in that way. Whereas I'm very much of the opinion of, look, say what's on your mind, man. As long as you've articulated it and you, and you, and you communicate it in a way that's conducive to actually communicating, then you're fine. If that means shouting, if that means whispering, if that means singing, if whatever it is. But like most people need that initial prompt. Like it's okay here, which I understand what your point is. In the pub, you go there. There's a couple of drinks that sort of the the tension is lessened a little bit. There's a there's a reason for being there. If it's sport, or if it's just your mates, you are given the license to be a little bit more flamboyant and a bit a bit a bit more eccentric. So I do take your point there. That's a fair point. Yeah, it's also it's just not work or home, right? Sure. I mean, I think like that. You know, if you're not a gym goer, and and I'm not a gym goer, and if you Why? you know if you don't sort of attend the football at the weekends, and I and I don't most of the time, then I think you know the pub is somewhere to go. Now you know the obvious the downside of the of that reality is uh, uh, you know alcoholism is a massively widespread spread problem. As I said, like you know, in close contact with plenty of people who don't drink anymore, so it's it's less about it's less you know I don't say pubs are a good cultural cornerstone because of the drinking i think it's just it, it, as you said it's the it's the license to the license to have, have a different perspective for a few hours whether mm. that is because you're inebriated or not like you know and a place where i don't know a place where a place to go is what i'm saying that's inside so what we're saying is that um yeah pubs are pubs are important okay I, that, that's an interesting, an interesting start to the show. I've never, I've never had an interesting start to the show in that way before. I was fully that's expecting you welcome. to. I was fully expecting something along the lines of, right, okay, look, there's a story behind this, not a, 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 a fervent defence of, of the culture, because uh, it's something. I mean, because by the way, um, it's different in different cultures. Um, for instance, um, uh, in, in the Polish culture, for instance, drinking is just part of the normal family and social dynamics. So they just drink. Mm. They just drink normally anyway. It doesn't matter where they are. In Australia, it's the same. They go to each other's houses to get liquored up. They don't do it in public, and every place is closed to seven o'clock. So it is a unique institution in England. I would, and, and indeed in Ireland to a certain degree, I will give you that. Um, but yeah, come on, man. You're supposed to be. You're supposed to be the the lively one who's undermining everything. You're not supposed to be giving me good answers. What's wrong with you? I'll try my best. Ask me another question. What a piss poor start to the show. He's making jokes, and no, he's not actually. Sorry, I'm not even paying attention. So okay, let's let's bring this back on things. So, g- genuine question. What was the genesis of Tifo? Was there a moment? Was there a catus? Was a was there a fuck you moment? Was there a 
I've got it moment or was there just something that prompted you to really start taking it seriously? There, there was, and it was very serious, and I'll tell you about it now. <laughs> It was, ex it was extremely <laughs> Don't serious. I believe anything about what you're going to say? <laughs> I, was, uh, I was in the Lake District. And uh, have you ever been to the Lake District, Lawn? I might have been. I don't recall it, I'm afraid. Sorry. Oh, fine, fine. We're a lovely part of northwest England. And uh, not far from where I was born. And I was uh, rambling uh, through the hills of the, the Lake District, in and out of a few caves. You know, close call with some water and a few sheep here and there as well. And I, uh, I stumbled upon a, da a daffodil, you know, and I looked at the daffodil Lord, and I thought, oh, I should make a YouTube channel about football because, because like, that's what would be good. And I'll do that. And then I, I came back and I had about four other people who I won't name uh, because they don't deserve credit. I had about four other people do it on my behalf. And um, and now I'm I'm on your podcast. So, you know, you know it's the it's the. Um, it's the Lake District of the Bank, really. It's um, and it was that's it's an important and meaningful and and truthful story, um, and it's completely true, and mm -hmm. it means a, it means a lot to me. They, 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 they I, I got what I asked for, I guess. Um, it, for, well, look, for clarity, I, like I started the Halcyon show on a pure fuck it moment. I'd been toying with doing YouTube for months and months and months. I uploaded three videos and no one watched them, so I decided to delete it all. And then I had, uh, I got fired. And then I decided, uh, do you know what? Sc screw this. Uh, I have a green screen and lights and shit, so let's just start. And six what, years what later, what did you get fired from? What did I get fired from? Yeah. Uh, I worked in, I, I worked in a church and I yelled at a nun. What did you actually get fired? From? What did I get fired from? Uh, do all of your jokes include nuns? <laughs> they're just such. A, they never talk. They never talk back to. Well, it's either that or the ex-wife that I've never had, or the mother-in-law. Never talk back. <laughs> do you know what? I've never met a nun. I don't know why I'm joking. I've never met a nun in my entire life. I've seen them in in certain. Do you know what? Anyway, point being is that um, no, I started. No, no, um, unless, I started unless you don't want to talk about it. Yeah. Oh no, 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 no. no. It, but what, so, did, what did you get fired from? Uh, well, I got fired basically because I hit. I hit various moments in my life where I just lost motivation for what I was doing because I disagreed fundamentally about what people were doing and why. And it's been a, a sort of a strong suit and a weak suit for me from from the perspective of I, I I'm a firm believer that if you're going to do something. You should do it right and you should do it for the right reasons. If your heart's not in it or you've got the wrong motivations, ultimately you're going to put yourself in a position where you're miserable. And I've got no will or want to be miserable in my life. I think a lot of people these days, for one reason or another, convince themselves to get into a way of life or to start uh, start as they mean to go on with something. And they wonder why they have to look at Instagram or uh, uh, monetary gain or any number of different vices that give them some comfort or some relief from what they do day to day. And I think that's madness. I think you should do something every day that you either love doing or is going to lead to something that you love doing. I work in a completely mm -hmm. different industry now and I've, I'm very good at my job, by the way. And I do this for, for fun. And this is brilliant because it's the easiest thing in the world because it's the thing I got given an award for, in sick form for doing, talking. It's very easy. Uh, congratulations. Uh, I, was, I was the most talkative person. I haven't shut up in 16 years. So... I'm, work, I'm working on it though. I'm working on it, but this isn't well, about. What do, you, what do you do now? I just, I'm only watching people. He's the interviewer. The is. interviewer is turning into the interviewee. What the hell is going on? No, no, no. I we just want to know what your job is. I just like you don't have to tell me, but I, I'm curious because you seem to not want to tell me, and that's why I want to know. I I don't know what's happening here. My show is being usurped. Should we? Should we? Indul let's indulge. What do I do now? I work in IT. Yeah. Oh, I fix what, what, like you fix computers, yeah. I yeah, fix okay. things, and I and do the. I do the. So, have you tried turning it on, off and on again? Okay, yeah. cool. Have yeah. you checked your internet connection? Okay, cool. And also, do you know what this is? Right. Genuine story. So... Someone said, "I can't hear." They can't hear me. I can hear them. Right. Cool. Make sure you're not off mute. What do you mean? Well, these things have a little red button in the middle. I see. I see. Demonstrative purposes also. Nice use of a prop there. Aren't well, you? you know, you got to be you got to be on point sometimes. But anyway, I'm very good at discerning uh, solutions to problems. That's always been mm -hmm. a, a, a thing of mine, and it also means that I'm able to discern a solution to this problem, which is you're the one people want to talk to, not me. How long me. have you been doing your job at the IT factory? What, what's what's the situation? The IT been factory. There for a long time. Are you passed your probation yet? What's happening? Do you know what? That's a good question. I'm going to answer it with another question, which is: Have yeah. you always been creative? 
Oh, for sure, man. One of the most creative people around. But I'm very interested in how to fix computers. <laughs> I really want no, because I would consider myself. I, I tell you what, I'll answer your question by asking another, but by including a fact about myself. I feel very uh, competent when it comes to IT skills. Yeah, I feel like I could fix almost uh, anything on a Windows computer. But when it comes to MacBooks, which they have provided me with here at the Athletic, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing, and it makes me feel on a daily basis like I'm smaller than when I'm with a Windows computer. I feel like I'm large with a Windows computer. How do you feel around computers? Uh, you, you get more comfortable around computers when you realize they're not machines. In the sense that um, a, me a, mecha a mechanical engine, once it's got a fault, it keeps the fault. There's nothing you can do unless you replace a component or you, um, you make a repair. With PCs, they're a lot like people in the sense that they can develop a habit or you know a bad sequence of network uh, uh, network connections or, or processes that lead to it crashing or lead to it sometimes a good clean out or a good restart will then reset everything and it'll work just fine but people get it in their head that when something develops a fault it, it's baby out with the bathwater time so once you get your, your head around the concept that it's not it's not a mechanical device it's not something where something is broken somewhere and it therefore needs to be it could just be sometimes that it's got the 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 the, the um the electronical equivalent of hiccups like it's, well, there's something you know. fun though isn't there about uh, discarding a computer i mean like i don't haven't actually ever i was thinking about this the other day because i move house i've moved house loads over the last 10 years and i keep moving my old laptops because i've never i've never thrown them away i don't know what you're supposed to do so i've got about maybe four it's not a bad run rate for 12 years four laptops that's pretty uh, good yeah but um i've still got them all but there's something nice about consigning one sentimental too but nice about consigning one to the sort of pile with the others to the graveyard of technology and getting a new one even even if that is baby in the bathwater there's a sort of psychological thing is, isn't there oh 100 well you should you should upgrade your equipment on a in regular many basis ways, you guys Lord, have that means that in you, as your job is telling people that they can't have that like psychological moment of joy where they get a new computer you fix the one that they were ready to part ways with and uh, then they have to stay with it and it's sort of um that's it. You're kind of like a harbinger of a uh, of unpleasantness. When did I become a villain in this story? What the hell's going on? So is Just this now. what everyone has to deal with each week? They come, they come with their prep. Right, like, okay, Joe, I've got this fantastic breakdown of this game. There's a really good piece of insight that I've managed to discern. It's a real quick mood. That's great and everything. But I was watching. Uh, something on Netflix that everyone else appears to be watching. So let's talk about that. I think that's I think that's true. I would say one of my best skills, Lorne, is being very bored by the things uh, because I feel <laughs> you like you made a video people... series out of it. <laughs> people are bored. People these days they get bored easily, don't they? So if I'm bored when someone's talking, I feel like a good proportion of the audience is bored. So but, we should move on. So a serious question, because that's one of the questions I had for you is you were able to identify a niche in the market and a very significant one at that because it's it's obviously paid dividends does it come from that does it come from this idea that because i think i, I forget who the, the music producer is but he made a point of, of of buying and selling his own record label over and over again because he knew how to to market it and, and promote it better than the bigger record cables do and it all come down to a basic philosophy i don't market the music i sell to me I market it to the people that are going to buy it and I know how to identify them. Are you the same then? Are you sort of in the in the position of being able to go, I don't really have the most vested interest in this, but that makes me the perfect person to identify what people in a general position are looking for and how to give it to them. In some ways, yes, uh, but I would use myself as the as the audience, which is like it's not a skill. It's like being an everyman uh, and having a sort of good idea of what people are when people are going to switch off. I mean, it's also just a generational thing, right? Like the reason I understand YouTube is because I had YouTube as a teenager. Mm. It's, the, it's the reason why people older than me are going to struggle to understand the software in the same way that, that, that I would or the platform in the same way that I would. And it's the reason that people the younger than me are going to understand TikTok better than I can. Oh, just God. In, in, yeah. Intrinsically and instinctively. Uh, so it's not really a skill. It's just like, I, I, you know, I was alive at that time and I, you know, and I knew what other people like me, fairly ordinary, would be interested in because I was interested in it. 
in the, but, I mean, that, that's the extent of it. Which is fair enough, except for the distinction that I would draw between your content and a lot of the other content that focuses either on football or even a sporting capacity is that you guys are able to stay relevant, interesting and entertaining, but without at one point going full Gary Neville. Like you've, or you, you've, you've managed to to cultivate this kind of very unique space within the sphere because the way I discovered you guys originally was um, in tandem with a lot of other uh, content creators kind of going full nuclear option a lot of their content it was always this is the end of the world this is the worst thing ever he needs firing they need firing you need firing and then I happened across you guys and it was this like sensible try like the very concept of it seems to go against the notion of YouTube which is controversy at every turn red lights explosions KSI you know it's it's but it was wonderful I can't tell you what an unmitigated pleasure and joy it was especially during the pandemic when you guys were on every single week and you were covering some of these big topics that we all thought wouldn't get covered but you and you covered it in such a thoughtful concise yet entertaining way and you're a big part of that because of course you you're you're responsible for a lot of the entertainment factor Alex was you know responsible for a lot of the thought Seb was responsible for a lot of the heart and some of the moral factor of it JJ's now come in and is a mad hatter of god knows what but like you're you're a driving force of that and i i wondered what your thoughts were in terms of of, of you know sort of cultivating that and and you know was that a concerted effort that you had to sort of stay on that path as opposed to maybe indulging in some of those more controversial tendencies uh yeah i mean it was intentional yeah but again like it's just based on what i would want to watch and it sounds like you're fairly similar in that regard um i don't like click super clickbaity stuff i don't you know i think the way the way i think about things is well put it this way i'm quite tall i'm not really tall and i go on about it all the time so somebody has told me but i'm i'm six foot four right and uh, i as i move about the world notice things uh, constantly that are not for me like buses not for me can't stand up straight in a bus like you know i get squeezed into the seat Oddly enough, when I sit somewhere where there's ample legroom, I feel uncomfortable now because I'm so used to being squashed in, sort of womb-like, that uh, I much prefer that. Um, but, you know, shoes, have to buy them on the internet. You can't buy them in shops. Shoe shops, not for me. You know, those sorts of things. And I apply, like, most stuff in the same way to my set of, you know, personality, pers personal interests or, like, psychological interests or whatever. Most stuff, not for me. I prefer things that are for me that's a bad description <laughs> um <clears throat> but you know 90 percent of what's on youtube is not for me uh, but there are 2.6 billion youtube users so 10 percent of that is shit loads of people and like the way that we think about it here which is, is probably more like useful for internal marketing spiel or you know when we when we have meetings with people and we try to explain who our audience is to them i would always say uh, you know the core audience of tifo like myself are people who liked football at school or when they were kids but weren't cool enough to play it or be part of the football gang and therefore were excluded from it and like the football gang is the audience that most broadcasters and youtube channels and and you know media outlets are chasing uh because they're football crazy and you know they spend loads of money on it and they'll read everything and we i don't want to exclude those people at all i just think there is also an like uh equally as big if not probably significantly bigger group of people who like sports and like football but have been excluded from those conversations Stations because 100%. they're not cool football bad people. 100%. There's fucking loads of those people, <clears throat> and I'm one of them, and you're probably one of them, and everyone that works at TIFO is one of them, and all the like the people that come up to us in the street. Um, you know, I fun like we JJ and I and and uh, uh, John and Seb will get like recognised fairly often now because of the number of people that watch our videos. But the thing that's obvious to me about that is that the people that come up to us in the street are all nerds, right? <laughs> They're all like, and I love them. It's like, it's lovely, but I'm not getting recognised by football, like mega football fans. I can go to a stadium and no one knows who I am. Lord. But I walk around pubs and stuff around here and the people that come up and see, you know, they're all weird people with glasses and beards and people who I can just see instantly. Oh yeah, you weren't a successful footballer at school, were you? I wasn't either. Great. Let's let's commune together, you know? And that's that's what it is. And that's, that's why I like it. I, I don't say these things, you know, to sort of, it's not like a, a masterstroke of marketing or like or anything it's just it's just 
oh, I am this person and I would have this thing, I would watch this thing and it doesn't exist. There's nothing like things aren't made for me. I think because of how narrow often a lot of marketing is um, that, you know, you miss out the fact that there are lots of <clears throat> general interest uh, people, casual people that for fo football is like the best thing in the, in the world for people in every industry liking it right like there's the cross section of people who like football is astonishing and it's like it's a lot more focused than than the music because music is so broad and there's so many different genres and you know the same the same with film but with football specifically the, the the cross section is amazing and you will find someone in any walk of life that likes football and they're all completely different to each other and i think most football content to use the word is aimed at 10 percent of that group uh, and the other 90% just sort of make do with what's available. They, you know, they would have been listening to Guardian Football Weekly, which is one of the first things probably that was that was accessible to those people. Uh, and um, this is not to say at all that TIFO is the only outlet that, 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 that is accessible to those sorts of people or market is towards those sorts of people. But, um, you know, there's not that many. But you were one of the few to make football fun again. What I mean by that is that there was a period of time where I think most content, it's fair to say, was geared towards controversy and conflict. Do you want to know why the Halcyon Show is called the Halcyon Show? Direct protest to that. I want to go back to a time where things have a sense of peace, calm and serenity and are taken from a considered perspective. That's the whole point of the name. But that was in a time where things were just starting to get cranked up on YouTube. A lot of university students were watching a lot of content generated by things like FIFA and COD and all the rest of that sort of stuff. And then once the sort of larger companies like Sky, like BT, like TalkSport and all of these other guys start viewing YouTube through the prism of a younger audience, let's get let's try and access them. Um, how, let's get some direct engagement with them. Then that really went past 11. And like I say, I, I remember the day when I got turned on to you guys. I was watching a Simon Jordan show and I went, I can't take this anymore. This is just, it's been three days of every day. This is the worst thing that might have ever happened ever. And I'm including world wars in that assessment. And I need to, so let's, let's have a nose around. And it was, um, there was a Super League video of yours that I made a direct comparison of the day I made my Super League video. And I remember because I stole basically all of your guys' ideas and none of his. Full disclosure, I basically stole all of their ideas. I have no original opinions of my own. I plagiarize everything. Welcome to YouTube. Anyway, point <laughs> being is that like you managed to, to to navigate the waters and identify that niche and you've 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 managed it so well to continue to grow even though the channel's gone through a number of significant changes you've gone through a load uh, a load of significant changes so tell me about what it's been like as sort of that independent you know enterprise of i have this idea it's a good idea it's got a lot of potential through to now where that potential is starting to pay off but now you need to start thinking about how to continue to generate momentum because as we all know stagnation is not the name of the game in youtube if you're not growing the algorithm didn't like you so how do you view those two times through through the prism of how you sit now how do you feel about how you started versus how you are how you're doing now um i mean i know a lot more now and there's loads more people that work here which makes my life a lot easier um i think you know the core values of it and you'll have to forgive me for talking about it in that way but like you know tifo's core values are still the same we we try to avoid you know controversial and clickbait related content we sort of flirt with the lines of that a little bit because we have to but you know in comparison to the majority of other things it's you know it's night and day but you never hear um, jj bull begin a video with so manchester united beat arsenal 3-1 today but let's not talk about that let's instead talk about uh, uh, Rashford's house that he's bought. It's got three bedrooms and he's got a Lamborghini and it got signposted. Well, yeah. Have you seen his model? Let's check out his Instagram. He's still, sure. you know, he's still, it's still the blokes talking about football essence. And I know you've brought in other individuals and it's not as narrow minded as that, but there's still this. It, it it's reminiscent of a community it still has that feel it still has that very welcoming very um unpretentious feel to it well that i mean that's good to hear it's difficult to it's difficult to have a perspective of it um it's your baby yeah. of course yeah and, and you know it's like you don't always know what people what people think um 
I think I think you know the unpretentiousness. Uh, I think some people would argue that the illustrated videos are pretentious, but really, uh, why? I think some some people would because I don't know. I think it, they're what because you pronounce your T's. <laughs> Maybe yeah. Come on now. Uh, but I think that all of that, like the you know the unpretentiousness of stuff, is is intentional because um, it doesn't matter. I think that, I think the, one of the issues, one of the things I think about uh, um, video on YouTube or, or online is that people think about it like TV. You know, when like creative agencies or ad agencies make video online video content or digital video content, they they structure it and they program it and they think about it in the in the same way as TV, and it's not. Mm. Like one of the most interesting things about uh, about you know modern times when everyone has a mobile phone in their pocket. I can't remember who it was that, that said this, but um, I think it was Adam Curtis actually, who's a, a BBC uh, uh, sort of video essayist. And uh, I, I may have misattributed it, but we'll pretend it was him anyway. Um, he said uh, that you know, he famously makes films that are structured in a very confusing way. And, you know, they jump from one topic to another and back and forth. And maybe he'll tell six different stories all interwoven, which theoretically equal something at the end, if you're paying attention. Uh, and, you know, some, an interviewer asked him about that. And he, he said, the key is that the audience today are very used to just flicking through stuff on their phone. They're very used to jumping between different uh, different pieces of content and often starting halfway through a conversation or leaving halfway through a conversation. And whilst maybe there's an argument to make that, that 30 years ago, um, the audience for like, entertainment um, did not have the, the f necessarily the facility to be able to pick up a conversation halfway through and understand it or, or, or um, you know, in instinctively understand the context of it in a way that people do do now. They do now because everyone's exposed to the internet, and lots of people, you know, my age and and, and slightly older, are um, grew up with the internet and have have a sort of instinctive understanding of like you know, when something is an advert, when it's not, like mm. what the context of something is, like when when something is a joke and when it's not. It's just, it's always interesting to to to, um, to read about. Uh, court cases related to internet jokes you know whether or not you you agree with the telling of those jokes it's always interesting to see the jokes then put into a sort of very different context uh, and and discussed amongst a group of people who did not grow up with the internet and maybe don't have the necessary and it's not no fault of their own it's just a generational thing don't necessarily have the the the, the facility to instinctively understand whether something is meant humorously or not i think like there's a great deal of i i really one thing i really love about the internet is that um, everything doesn't have to be serious or funny. Like most memes are serious and funny at the same time. Mm. And and a certain subset of people, and it's related to age, understand that. And some and some people some people don't. Uh, and I think um, you know when people make football YouTube videos to bring it back, a lot of the time people think about it like like TV when it doesn't doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be at all. Uh, so I th think um, having those sorts of conversations and thinking about easier to have, um, and it's you know the space is like relatively empty on YouTube to be honest. So it's like it's quite easy to be different. Like, I don't obviously like I'm proud of the work that we've done and I think everybody that works here is is amazing. It's like hopefully that would go without saying, but I think all the people that work at TIFO are incredible at their jobs. But to a certain extent it's quite easy to stand out um because there's sort of mostly one way of doing things. And then we just have a like a slightly different way which is it's not to say that it's like better than other channels uh it's just different and it, it and it is honest to the people that work here like i don't none of us would work in football video content if if we had to do the thing that you know lots of the other mainstream media organizations have to do because it doesn't suit our personalities it's not how we would authentically engage with stuff um but because we are, have been able to make a success out of this it's, it's, it's natural like i said it's not it's not better or worse than anything else it's just it's just different 
you say that it's not better or worse, but I think the, the better or worse argument is subjective only when it's not evident on the faces and in the performances of the people in the videos that they are loving every second of it. Now, uh, I have a joke question here, which is, what is it like to be one of the only three people to have fun in Milton Keynes in the whole of history? And that's because, again, while you're making that video, it looked like you guys were having a ball. Now, whether or not you were actually enjoying, uh, you know, racing a, a professional, um, you know, esports uh, driver, or whether or not you liked being in Milton Keynes, for the record, I don't. But the 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 fact that you guys have such a wonderful dynamic between you all, and there's such a lovely sense of fun about what you're doing, even when the time comes to sit down and have difficult conversations, like you know the Super League videos weren't easy uh, easy for you guys to navigate originally. Um, you know some of the heaviest stories that you have to navigate within the podcast aren't that easy, and I'm sure some of the games that you have to cover that you don't end up then putting uh, into the podcast, and you're like, oh bugger, that's, that's nil nil. I was really rather hoping there'd be some something but you know that must be frustrating at times but there's there's a wonderful sense of fun that comes from your channel and and the fact that you've been able to channel that into a lot of different uh, avenues like the video series that you've produced the football manager series with ian was fantastic i watched those videos millions of times uh, the super league video with uh, i'm having leventile you know i've watched those a million times um even some of the old podcasts the sensible transfers because May, they're not be uh, evergreen, but they serve as wonderful little time capsules of here's who was potential at this point. It's like going back and playing an old FIFA and going, oh, wow, Zachary Bacardi was supposed to be a big deal by now. <laughs> oh, no. Um, and then you go like Erling Haaland, rated 65, potential of 69. Well, you kind of you might have gotten that one a bit wrong, haven't you? So like that sense of fun. I mean, is that, again, something that's just, like you say, is that just natural for you guys? Do you just kind of come into work and go, look, let's just be ourselves. Let's let's put on as best as we can, but let's just ultimately embody that reason. We're here because we want to be and doing, we're doing the things we want to do. It's all manufactured. It's, um, it's, I know, uh, I know. Like a sort of, ex you know, excruciating, painstaking yeah. detail. Um, it's, it's algorithmic, I think, and... <laughs> None of us li actually like each other at all. You're hiring um, Jake Paul soon, aren't you? Very soon. Yeah, yeah the contract's nearly finished. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think that will that will help the illusion of fun transcend even to an even greater extent through through the videos um, and keep you clicking, Law. You know, that's the that's the name of the game. Here. It's all about money. <laughs> Can I, I? I have you here. Can I? Please don't have a famous youtuber on like from the, no, i know that you've had um, i forget his name the other day um and he was fine he was great for the world cup um the world cup quiz you did i forget his name i apologize oh, Zealand. yes he was he was fine he was lovely um he was but, okay by you know if if i'm just i don't i don't even know what anymore are you, what are you asking who, who, who did you I'm not on. want us to have on i'm so i'm lamenting the day when not only are the logan uh, are the paul brothers a part of boxing, wrestling, which are two of my other fond outlets, but they're going to fight in MMA, and one day they're going to appear in all of my favourite channels. And so you're one of my favourite channels. Of who to invite, invite yeah. So Jake, J A K E, brothers. Logan, L O C O C K. Yeah, got it, got it. <sighs> I've got it there. Don't worry, we're fine. Fuck, what have I done? No. Um, no, but I'm sure they'll be keen to come on. I really, I really am. You, you jest. They joined the WWE in the midst of a goddamn sex scandal with Vince McMahon. They'll do fucking they anything the for WWE. money. They joined the WWE. Logan Paul is now an officially signed member of the WWE roster. Yes. Seriously? That is 100% true. I've got to look this up. Dude, Pat McAfee is part of their roster, and he has a multi-million dollar podcast, and he's just like, okay, <laughs> whatever. Pat McAfee? I don't know who that is. He's a former American football uh, player, a punter, and he had... Uh, uh, he, well, he has uh, a very successful podcast in America where he wears vests and stands up a lot. Um, oh, that makes okay. him a good interviewer because he also, and here's the kicker, he knows how to say the word bro in very specific situations, i.e. the yeah. beginning, middle, and every sentence. It's critical. Yeah. You have to spritz it in, bro. I would say that's good. I, I would like to say about this this Paul, uh, Logan Paul, <laughs> that his... You've um, never heard of them! No, I know, I know. I, I was going to say, wasn't sure. I can't tell what? them apart to look at. But Jake is the short hair. Logan is the long hair. Oh, okay. Well, Logan Paul's B outfit looks fantastic for the WWE. 
I think that's he looks like a sort of mysterious bee related a wasp villain. What have uh, I done? A lot of drawstrings on here. Very interesting. It's enough to make me want to watch the WWE. I think maybe I'll become a, a WWE fan again. You should. Do you know what? If if you were to pick a week, um, this is the week to do it because it's the it's the it's handbag it's handbag. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. I was just. Joking. I, was, I know you're joking, but this is this has been handbag slapping season. It's been hilarious watching all the shit that's going on behind the scenes. They, it's got nothing to do handbags. with wrestling. Do they carry handbags with them? They carry they these wrestle? big leather things with metal on, and they pretend that they're worth something. They they hold them up and all the rest of this sort of stuff. Belts, right. I think they're called. Um, right. But no, the, yeah. like. Look, I'm a wrestling fan. I'm 31. No, 32. Sorry, I'm 32. I'm a wrestling fan. I, I'm sorry, but the fact no, no, is that they're, they're 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 ruining everything that I love, and I need yeah. you to promise me you won't let them ruin Tifa. Okay. I, I can't. I can't promise that because um, I. I Would you really get them would. on for the views though? If if they called you and said, "Hey, listen, we're re we're real big fans." Sorry, bro. <laughs> Bro, we're such big fans of the podcast, bro. Joe, bro. Hey, listen, can listen, I come bro. on? One of the one of the things about being one of the great greatest guys is I don't discriminate against people. If Lawn if Lawn if Lawn Paul and Jake and Paul uh, called and said that they wanted to be on the podcast, I'd say yeah, hell. I'd say hell yeah. Let's do it. Uh, and we can talk all about football tactics. It'd be you know it'd be one of the greatest uh, podcasts of all time. It's a strange crossover, wouldn't it? <laughs> It, it would be a. Crossover. It would be but a I'd crossover. Be happy to do it. Yeah, yeah. I think also oh, if the people at the New York Times found out that I'd turned down Logan Paul, uh, they might be disappointed with me because uh, I feel like uh, that's an opportunity, isn't it, to what? to interview? Where is interview Alex Stewart phenomenon. and his swath of ravenous raccoons when you need him? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Moving on. Right, I have to move on. I can't let this be a thing. Yeah. So, uh, question. Actually, no, not a question. I need you to tell me about something because I can't tell you how happy I was when I found this, and I'm sure a lot of other. In fact, no, I tweeted it, so I know a lot of people have this. Yeah. Tell me about grape tea. But the drink, the drink of. Uh, you can tea tell me made about that grape. if you want, but then when you're done, I need you to tell me about <laughs> your song, grape tea, and what everything. Do you want me to say? Everything about it. So I had no idea. Idea that you had. I mean, I'd heard it you on some of the tell podcasts. From, like, the musical richness of my of my timbre. You couldn't tell. You have an artistic nature to you, mm. but I did not equate that to having the. All right, just cards on the table. I love that song. I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. And then I went right. Please tell me there's more. And there were, but it comes <laughs> back to that song because I love that song. I love. I seriously, it's one. Of, it's in. It's in a list. It's after Tame Impala. And the Kooks, and uh, uh, Two Door Cinema Club, and a bunch of other old school. Um, I say it's old after school. the Kooks. Come on, Lauren. I'm sorry, Come but on. Naive is a pretty freaking cool song. No, retrospectively, I used to I used to hate them when I was in school, but I think maybe that was sort of posing hatred. It, I was the same. I was the same. Yeah, when they, yeah, whenever yeah. any one of those guys went on the Buzzcocks, for instance, I immediately was like, okay, they're not too bad now that I've I've seen Simon Apple sure. take the piss out of them. But before yeah. that, no, they're words i won't say hmm. but grape tea come on i have to know come on tell me about it tell me what was what, did you have a band if, if you did who was who, who did what how did you put the song to, come on tell me about i love grape it tea the song feels like it tell would me. be more fun if it was left as a total mystery oh, god damn it what's the point of an interview if you're not going to answer my questions and just I say ah know. well wouldn't you like to know you just seemed like you really wanted to do it, so I said, "Yeah." And, uh, <laughs> never agreed to answer any of them. Oh, I'll I see. You, listen, I got you. I'm obviously, obviously, a, a musical genius, one of the greatest of my my generation. It's 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 plain to see. I think everyone, I think everyone can see that. Um, but uh, you know, I just loved football YouTube so much that I decided to give up hopes of becoming a, um, a, a folk rock and roll star um, in order to service uh, the needs of slightly nerdy and you know of varying ages but definitely not under the age of 18 uh, football uh, YouTube outsiders and uh, it's what I've always wanted to do and I'm just delighted to be able to do it on a daily basis for money so you know and that obviously money is more important than art anyway so what? That. But seriously, right? You're you're a handsome guy, tall, talented with music, and you can and so sing. You say, 
That's a devil. That's it. Oh, do you know what? Right, fine. Throwing you under the bus. Search Grape Tea now and tell me that 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 this this chap in that picture where he's looking sullen, just arching over just a little bit to make himself look a little less tall than he is, but makes him look more approachable and nice. Kind of guy you bring home to your mum. Tell I me, tell to, me uh, you wouldn't. Tell me you I, wouldn't. You're lying. Tell I me you wouldn't. I tried to um, to uh, log in into that YouTube account to remove all of those videos. No. I I can't get in. I don't know oh, which email address I used to sign up, and also I signed up before Google bought YouTube, <laughs> so it's not even like it's not even a Google account. I've no access to it, unfortunately. Um, so there they there they remain. Would but you no, really listen, take listen, them down? I was, I was a. Uh, I wouldn't take. I mean, maybe I don't know. I would, you know. Uh, eh. What am I doing? I'm, so I'm talking you into signing Logan Paul and taking down your music. Why am I telling you anything <laughs> that I like about you? I didn't come no, bring no, you on here to you know, break like, things. It's a different, it's a different thing, isn't it? It's like uh, people. Um, it's slightly odd. For reference, for 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 for, for those people listening, um, these there were a few songs that I recorded about 14, 15, 16 years ago that I uploaded to YouTube about about 13 years ago uh, and you know recently uh, there's been some sort of you know the youtube algorithm is very clever and has a uh, has uh, enforced some tifo audience crossover um which is a sort of slightly uncomfortable just because uh, you know i did all that i did that stuff a long time ago there are, there are and i'm i'm i find it interesting that you have been unable to find if you have searched on there is much more music online which is a lot more recent than that. Uh, I which might I have, have done, but I don't want to embarrass yeah. you too much. Great Tea was where it started, so I figured that's sure. where I would leave it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, hey, listen, I was a, I was a big hit. You know, I was a, I was a hot thing, as they say, uh, in my youth, and uh, you know. <laughs> were, was... you ja were you jam hot? Were you? Were you? Were you? I was jam fat hot. and dark, and all those well, old colloquialisms. Indeed. I was, and uh, you know, it's just a shame that I'm not now. Now I'm just, you know, just a man. That's it. God. So, <laughs> I, I right. Ah, oh, this interview's getting away from me. I thought, uh, I thought there was another interview that got away from me worse than this one. This one's ah, oh, wow. Is this, this the worst one? That's oh no, 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 no. What no. can I do to make it the worst one? What can uh, you what do else? to make it the worst one? Uh, you need yeah. to say everything that you've said in every previous interview, and any joke that I make, you need to smile and look at me like you're my father, disapproving of me acting up in public. I've been trying to do that, but we're similar ages. Um, and most of my friends are taller than me significantly as well. I'm the short ass of the group, so there's not really an intimidation. I mean, look, you're a very, very, again, very handsome gentleman. Not intimidating. I'm sorry. Sure. Do you say, how, how, what's your height? Me? It depends. Am I wearing my shacks? No. Oh, barefoot. Then, uh, shorter than Puff or Tinder deems attractive. Oh, okay, I see. <laughs> and is that, is that why you go to the gym, would you say? To sort of go... <laughs> outwards is that because i know it's a thing it's a difficult thing isn't it uh no so i go to the gym because uh, again um depends on how you look at covid for me um i looked at covid as an opportunity to press a reset button on various avenues of my life the job that i do now got during covid uh a lot of my personal habits changed during covid and i decided to lose weight so at the beginning what, of COVID, what kind of personal habits come on let's dig deep here personal habits uh so um big gamer at the time didn't really socialize a tremendous amount uh didn't train uh, except for in very weird circumstances where i had the off chance to go do a wolf run or something like that train um, what is it exercise yeah so i lost eight and a half stone during uh, lockdown whoa yeah. that is, you're an inspiration that's very impressive it's an inspiring until you learn I, that that's I the third time there. i've done that in my life so you it got, tells you, you that i've fluctuated I I can I can hoover up a cave scene barking bucket quicker than you can sit down and order, my friend. It's just not a good thing. But I got motivation. I got fire to say, look, while the world stood still, it would be yeah. madness to stand still with it. Let's try and find ways of trying to get ahead of the curve. Yeah. And, and so, and and YouTube was a big thing. And obviously, you know, absorbing a lot of new content was a thing because it, you know, you don't get smarter by talking. You get smarter by listening to smarter people. Yeah. And I've become a, a, an avid fan of TIFO since. 
Mm. Hey. Oh, that, hey, man, that's cool. I can't believe you lost eight stone. That's crazy. Uh, how's your How's your body? Did the, Did the, <sighs> you know? Is it all sort of? You go to the gym, so it's taut. You getting taut? <laughs> Because I I'm I'm an overweight guy as well, Lord. This is why I say this. And I, I've lost I've lost I lost a lot of weight this year through an illness, uh, not through any desire to. Um, but and I've sort of I'm a fluctuator as well mm -hmm. at different times. But I would say that you know almost all, all of the the going down is upside, with mm. the with the exception that sometimes stuff isn't where it. Yeah, you should be. You know what I'm saying? I understand what you're saying, but here's the thing that they don't tell you on fitness sites is that as you get older, mm. it gets harder. And the more times yeah. you do this shit, the harder your body finds it to recuperate and, and recover them. Simple things like sleeping eight hours, training only for two, not training for four, five or six like I used to. Mm. Um, if it makes you feel any better, the, it, there are bad ways and good ways. The worst way I ever lost weight was I was on about 600 calories a day. I trained for about five to six hours a day. And I, I think I dropped eight. Again, it was about eight stone in about three months. Like the change was significant, That's but I much, felt though. it. That's too quick. I was really motivated though. I caught a picture of myself at Christmas and I thought, holy shit, I look American. I have to change. So sure. I changed. And this time around, it was, it was a more subtle thing. It took about sort of 12 18 months again throughout the pandemic but it's that thing you've got to it's it's a it's a mindfulness thing man like it, right. again in your job there must be a lot of stress and the problem with weight loss is stress is not a good thing you need to find ways of alleviating stress because your body in stressful situations it loves to hold on to its calories in case of an emergency and the problem is we live in a civilized society there's no such thing as emergencies you're never going to need to run away from anything so it just sits there just it just doesn't do anything so when people get stressed in their lives that's why i come back to this idea of happiness being not only something that you should find on a facebook meme it should be something that you embody and that you're cognizant of you need to remember to be happy and that's not mm. easy for a lot of people, especially yeah. when they do a lot of shit they don't like doing. That's very interesting. I, I, do, I think you're an inspiration. I have to say, that's uh, you know, I, are you going to try not to put it back on this time? Uh, so unfortunately, uh, I made the mistake of getting loved up about a year ago. That's not helped. Well, in a, you, it's in, you're in a relationship with a human yeah, being. Yeah, human being, female Lovely. one. Well, okay. she moans a lot. Um, you know, <laughs> all the stereotypes. <laughs> well, she moans a lot. She feeds me, and uh, what's the other thing she does? Uh, she wakes me up at like six o'clock in the morning to make her coffee so that she can go back to sleep, which ruins mm. my sleep. Which is fine. That's weird. It's great. Love you, but you know, it's 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 changed the dynamic a little bit because one of the other things they don't tell you about fitness is that, especially when you're quite angry about the position you're in, anger is only a useful emotion if you use it for useful purposes. If you just go around hating everything in the world and blaming everything in the world for where you are, but you're not doing anything about it, mm. that's just impotent rage, man. And a lot of people suffer from that sort of stuff. A lot of people I don't prefer, I prefer motivate to using that. it. <clears throat> I like to, I like to uh, blame. It's one of my favorite things to do. And uh, I, you were saying before about how your body retains the calories if you're in a sort of uh, stress or fight or flight mode. I like to retain the calories just in case I need them later. Um, I think, contrary to what you said, there's always an emergency around the corner and we all need to be careful at all times to make sure that we don't you know, get caught up in the oncoming struggle. So retain the calories blame use blame it's one of the best uh, uh things out there actions behaviors and also i would say what else um don't help anyone uh only help yourself right other things would be um because you asked my advice other things would be <laughs> no, i didn't, I didn't, I didn't. <laughs> make sure that no one's around you because if you loved someone they can hurt you and you don't want that, right? You want to be impervious to pain because this is all made up and this is, you know, this is when you die, it's that's it. And the sooner the better. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm just pitching my new self-help uh, YouTube channel. I think it's going to go down really well as we did before about finding a sort of different avenue different alternatives to what's out there in yeah. the mainstream yeah. i think a self-help channel <laughs> where you help people to be really unhappy would be uh... you help people to be really unhappy <laughs> i <laughs> would be very successful i have i have 10 seconds for an elevator pitch and go
<laughs> but no, but like it's it's madness how quickly things turn around when you just change perspective on a lot of this stuff. If you well, view things through the prism of a pop opportunity, that you, you changed. I won't listen to you. Tell me more about these habits that you, of yours that you changed during the lockdown. The weight one. Okay, fine. What else did you change? Was a habit. Are you a natural boss, by the way? Are you naturally good at being able to direct people to doing what they need to do? We, of course, you know. And now answer the question. And are you, okay, this is something that I struggle with being an interviewer because I want all my guests to like me. Are you good at being a dick when you need to be? Oh, mm, no. So you're no, not good. So if Alex that. is working or was working at two o'clock, no, JJ. JJ's busy doing his jingles and he's finished mm. and he's now doing his analysis and it's two o'clock in the morning. Mm. Graham Potter is now sacked within 24 hours for whatever reason. He was, I don't know, he's got some... Uh, I, you know, I don't want to say anything in case of lawsuits, but let's just say it's something bad. Um, sure. uh, JJ, I know you, you, you need sleep, right? Okay, great. But there's a really big news story happening now, and I need you to cover it because it's going to do bang numbers, bro. Yeah. You, you can't make that phone call? Well, I mean, I don't need to because uh, JJ and uh, young videographer producer Jamie were working until uh, 2 a.m. the other night. Uh, and uh, when we found out about the Graham, uh, well, the Thomas Tuchel news, uh, it was just before 10 a.m. I, I expect they wouldn't have been in the home until very late and wouldn't have had enough sleep. And they were already on their way to the office by the time I called to see what the plans were. So, you know, I don't I don't I don't need to. I mean, also, you know, I think it's just. I don't know. It doesn't matter, does it? I think that's the very important thing for everyone to remember always is it doesn't matter. And even though it feels like in the moment, it really, really matters. Um, it doesn't. And that doesn't mean I don't get caught up in being angry or grumpy or whatever. If something's not going right. But uh, then you go home and, you know, you see you're a significant other. If you have one or animal, if you have a significant animal, uh, an animal of like a significant size, you see that and uh, you go, oh, yeah, that thing I do for money. Um, Money's not even real, is it? So it doesn't matter. And um, I'm not going to be thinking about this when I'm dying. So why get so torn up about it? The, the way I see it, there's very little to get angry about at work, even though I'm angry all the time. You're angry all the time? Oh, of course, of course. Really? You know, I'm a, I'm a terrible person. I'm not angry. I don't, I don't uh, 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 transpose my anger to other people. But you know, it's you, you know what it's like. You get stressed out. You get, you get all whipped up. The reason I say these things is because I repeat these things to myself so that I remember not to get so, uh, so whipped up. You know. I. Well, this is what I was saying. Is is it, like when most people are sad or angry, the easiest thing to do is just remind yourself of what you're not sad or angry about like what are you happy about and if you can't think of something okay well then you need to give yourself something it's it's not easy and lose eight stone you can try that i wouldn't recommend it i'd recommend not gaining the eight stone in the first place i'd recommend yeah. you know not buying everything from the tesco value section uh just to save money i'd, I'd recommend this is like do you thinking know, of, do you know, you know what i like i really like ben and jerry's ice cream i don't know if you like that but i like it i haven't had things. any in years Go, tell me about more things I'm not allowed. Go ahead. Well, I don't know. I'm, I, I suppose uh, uh, th heavily f fat goods. Uh, a, a goose. <laughs> uh, well, uh, what else is it? Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Is <laughs> there lard? Oh. <laughs> Random thing like, I don't know, goose. Where did that come from? I don't know, fat goots. People always say that, aren't they? Yes, but like, I was, I was thinking you'd say like Nando's or something. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm a vegetarian. I don't understand. Meat, You're a vegetarian? So. Yeah, I don't know what the. the I, I don't understand meat, so I can't, uh, you know, I can't in, engage with the fattening meat game. That's why I said goose, because I it, see. it seems like a. Because of goose fat, you know? Is it, it what, moral purposes? No, I just always been a vegetarian. I, I was raised as one. So. Oh wow. Okay. Never had the temptation to try it now. Or? I, I'm a technically I'm a pescatarian. I oh, so you say. have fish? Okay. No, I that's eat, fair enough. I eat some fish, uh, but no, I've never eaten any meat. And no, I don't really want to try it um, hardly for two reasons. One reason, I think, with red meat specifically, if your digestive system is not used to it, it can take some time. And you know, I think. Uh, constipation is part of that process 
not so keen and I don't care enough, but also uh, because I think there are so many, seemingly to me, so many unhealthy meat choices that were I to, to be a, 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 a meat eater, that I think I would put more weight on than I already have because there seems like there's so many, you know, cheap meat deals out there. That is true. Yeah. And a lot of it's baked in saturated fats and stuff. And that's why the pescatarian thing makes sense. I, I kind of the same. I eat pretty much nothing but fish these days, except for the rare occasions where I maybe have a bit of chicken or turkey. Turkey's the best thing for uh, top tip. If you're weight training or trying to lose weight, turkey. That's that's the one to go for. Uh, okay. Um it's the highest highest protein highest protein to calorie content and that's the name of the game when you're trying to lose weight just try and think of it through the scope of that if you're ever hungry okay cool just look at the calorie content look at the protein content so long as those are low and high respectively then you can usually get away with it so long as it's a simple mathematic equation create a deficit stick to it don't be tempted by shit and you'll lose weight because just naturally your body will metastasize what you what you don't have i.e what you're not taking in and you'll be fine mm. Mm. So, and where does the Ben and Jerry's fit into that? Is that not in the uh, the plan? Because so, if it's not, then I'm out of this. I, I don't. I'm not interested. Uh, again, the Ben and the, the Ben and Jerry's episode. thing just comes from looking at the side of it and looking how much is in it and going, do you know what? I know I how know long it's good when I look at this the side is of it. gonna take I can see to run this sugar off. And calories are in there, and I go, when there's that many calories and that much sugar in it, that means it's good. <laughs> That's the thing, right? <laughs> Let's well. Let's just say I don't know how much how many calories are in Ben and Jerry's, but let's say there's there's a serving of three hundred calories. Okay, whatever how much that big bowl that oh, is, right? There's, there's a thousand in the whole thing. Do you know that's gonna? Do you know how long that's gonna take you to run off? Not uh, walk, um, run. Four minutes. Sure. Seven minutes. Uh, oh, you probably won't even need the six. Two. Two minutes. Uh, no, you're probably gonna need a good hour and twelve hour and fifteen minutes. Well, that's fine because I'm running for at least five hours a day, so I'm already I'm in I'm in a you know a sort of a, a net positive situation. So when you're hosting the TFO show, you've got like a Fred Flintstone thing going on under the desk yeah. where you're pedaling, you're effectively pe- generating power for the studio by by giving Pretty it much, that. Yeah. Okay. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of friction, as they say, uh, a lot of kinetic energy in the room. But, the uh, bounds yeah. of your genius knows no ends, my friend. That's very Indeed. good. Indeed, yes. Okay, yes. I have a few more questions, serious ones. Sure, sure, oh sure. Are you up for serious questions, or would you like another silly question? I, I leave the mind. choice to you. You ask whatever you ask whatever you like. You've got a you know a maximum <laughs> of another thirty seconds. Twenty minutes of my time, max. Thirty seconds. You okay. You don't want that much. This is this is already far too self-indulgent and long. So it's a little bit, but here's the thing. I want to get to know the, I want to get to know the creators of, of some of these, um, some of the more uh, prolific channels, because I think yeah. one thing that I'm seeing more, I don't know how you feel about this, given what I, I know you have to be focused on your own brand and what you do. Mm. I have a bit of time to, to, to view the landscape of things. Yeah. One of the things that I've noticed, especially since I started, and I started right around the time of the apocalypse, so it was not a good time to start, and it, it, st- it started with creativity to a certain degree. But what I've seen is that people have been too easily steered into certain types of content um, because either it's easy or because it's just contemporary and therefore what everyone else is doing, or they're being promoted to do it because oh you should do this because of this reason rather than asking the simple question of what do i want to do how can i make it successful and how can i make it something that i like to do so that those things self-perpetuate success you've done that you you're you're an example of someone that managed to identify a niche run with it persist with it and i'm sure there were many points during the journey that looked like it wasn't going to work out that there was going to be difficulties sacrifices and things that would have would have precluded you from succeeding but you've reached you're, you're you're on the shining mountain shining house on the hill now and it's only it's 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 the sky's the limit for you guys and i guess one of the things that i wanted to ask you is with regards to tifo what are some of the challenges that you think you're going to face or that you are facing day to day when versus new content types like tiktok like those youtube shorts and the facebook shorts that you can't get away from um, how do you, because you've always been great at diversifying your content, you've never stuck to one format, you've never been married to one thing, what are some of the challenges that you think you have to navigate or that you will have to navigate? I mean, shorts is one of them. Like, uh, it's very... Are you a fan of those, by the way? <laughs> yes and no. I mean, I watch them a lot. Uh, 
I deleted TikTok from my phone because I was watching it too much. Mm-hmm. And then I sort of just, the YouTube uh, app just kind of directed me towards shorts one day. And now, you know, I fill pockets of time with brainless activity. My feed is sort of, I've, I've kind of like cultured it specifically so that it only has um, funny memes and animal videos. And I don't have to deal with, you know, I don't know, like pretend science people making videos about the internet or the universe or whatever. Um, but uh, shorts is definitely something to contend with um, because it's very apparent that people have a proclivity for to watch shorter videos. And I think, you know, it's not necessarily that there is less time within people's days uh, that they're willing to to um, engage with video content. But I think, you know, one of the interesting things about shorts is that it requires less of a commitment on behalf of the the user. Uh, so it's very easy for me to justify to myself opening the YouTube app if I think I'm only going to watch a couple of short videos. I may well spend 20 to 30 minutes doing that in the same and then I might as well have watched, you know, half of one episode of the Halcyon show or something like and but it's something that feels like too much of a commitment to me when I'm taking my and phone out. That is a good that's an excellent point because people don't realize that when you're pitching someone an idea of hey, check this video, it's really great. Oh man, half I don't have half an hour. Well, okay, well, here's one that's 15 seconds. You got 15 seconds? Yeah, sure. Oh, I don't like it, but what's the next one? Yeah. But what's the next one? But what? And then, like you say, before you know it, 15 minutes, half an hour, an hour sometimes has gone by, and you still haven't even found anything that you liked watching. Yeah, there's not a lot of memorable stuff. Um, it's it's filler really isn't it uh, but, and do you honest. lament that when you consider that you guys put your heart and soul in into a lot of the content and there are gonna be people these days and like you say specifically a younger generation who only know this type of content that are gonna look at things even like the the dissertations that are only usually six seven eight nine ten minutes and go ten minutes man why is it taking you so long to explain what happened in this man you game man can't you just say Ronaldo scored and Owen can sum it up for you like does that frustrate you? The fact that that's going to be something that you're going to have to contend with? Because I know Alex was doing that for a little bit with the shorts. He, you know, he was he was converting them down. But even then, like you guys are about context. You're about the fullness of an argument. You're about using the superior analytical skills and the expertise of the people around you and who are the, the pinnacle of their industries to generate content that's worthwhile. And yet, it's going to be undermined to a certain extent by a generation of people that have been told why would you watch that when you could watch 50 15 second videos back to back to back to back and great news you probably won't like 90 percent of them but it's that that hit of dopamine it's the it's the slot machine element of it that's going to ultimately win out because just the mechanics of the human mind it can't help but skip to the next one i I don't lament it um because it's just an option right it's like Hmm. you know i don't always want to watch a, a TIFO video or something like a TIFO video when I open my phone. And there's a reason I, I mean, I'm watching shorts. I think it's just a different sort of content. And, and you know, I said, I said before that what we do is not better or worse than anything else. It's just different. Um, I do be- believe that, you know, I think there might be less production value or less thought that's been, that's gone into, you know, a 15 second video or a channel that does that. and it compiles memes of other people's work but it doesn't mean that there's less value in it uh, even if that even if it is not memorable or if it's you know if as i said if it feels like it's lacking it feels like it's lacking value because we're equating value to like the artistic um integrity of it then i think that's the wrong way to evaluate value uh i think if if it fills my time for 15 seconds and it distracts me and that's what I want in that moment, then that's very valuable to me in a way that, you know, there's, I think there's there's like two different types of things, right? Like I would think about, um, you know, the reason it'll be sad if all the cinemas close is because cinemas, cinema is not the same as films. Like I go to the cinema to watch films that I want to engage with 
Uh, and also crucially that I'm inevitably seeing for the first time. I don't think I've ever gone to see a film twice in the cinema, right? Um, I saw Space Jam not... twice, but yeah, that's fair enough. Well, it's a fantastic film. <laughs> if we're talking about the Michael Jordan version. I fell asleep I the first time. The James one. Oh, neither have I, but I fell asleep the first time I was seven. So, you know, it was a late but... night. But anyway, sorry, you were saying. No, that's no, fine. I would say, uh, you know, I watch a lot of films I've already seen when I'm at home on Netflix or on one of the other streaming services. And I uh, see if pick a film I, you know, I passively watch this three times already i'll just watch it again because i'm not looking for the same experience both of those things might be films but the experience is not the same one of them is where i'm engaged and i'm proactively part of the process another one is extremely passive where the content is washing over me and it's in some ways it's not just irrelevant like what the artistic integrity of it is it's actually better for me that it's that it would be perceived to have less artistic integrity because I want to be passive. I want it to wash over me. I don't want it to be difficult to contend with. And I think whilst both of those things are called films, they're not the same thing at all. Mm. Uh, and I would say the same thing about, about YouTube, right? Like it doesn't have to just um, dictate to shorts versus like longer form content. You have different tones within within both of those formats. So, you know, there's a skill to being able to explain context in in under 60 seconds and we'll get better at doing that right like it's not impossible to do that you just have to be smart about it and you can't you can't think it's as easy as like taking 60 second clips from what we've already done or converting longer videos down into shorts because that's never going to be the way to make the best stuff it might be the the way to best deal with the capacity issues that we have here uh but it might not be you know it's definitely not the best way to make the best thing um so i don't lam i know what you mean but i don't lament it because i don't personally attribute value to things based on their artistic in, in integrity which is fair enough and I, maybe i'm being a little bit too cerebral with this but what i what i think of is the story that um spielberg once told where he was in his attic and he's going through old nine millimeter reels and he's trying to cut together his own movies and it becomes a passion of his right imagine there's a current generation steven spielberg who has the ability to make the scope of story that is unimaginable but instead He's sitting there trying to fit objects into other objects. Now, I understand your point. What's wrong with and that? I, t I take the point, and uh, I, 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 I do take that it's it, maybe I'm trying to be too persuasive to making the content into the sort of thing that I would either benefit from or I could ultimately profit from. But I also think about, I think sometimes about what technology does and what content does, because I think technology has the power to connect content has the power to motivate and inspire and i'm not inspired by a lot of the stuff that i see at the moment i see a lot of plagiarism i see a lot of infringement i see a lot of copying and i see a lot of very derivative and very base ideas that are just about grabbing the algorithm and milking it for what it's worth and i understand and appreciate that to a certain degree ksi is probably the best example of someone who embodied uh uh that that range from start to finish in just terms of just stay relevant and and stay on the forefront of things and stay as 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 uh, pop popular as possible and th there's something to that and there's in a, i take your point there's nothing wrong with having that in your diet of content you know some dumb you know my parents generation had chubby brown and lee evans um you know i had you know different things i was more into cartoons and anime and you know the batman the animated series was a revelation for me when i was a kid this generation has TikTok and stuff. And I don't, because even something like the cartoons I watch, when you watch them back, you go, this was for kids? Because there's some stuff that's genuinely inappropriate in there, but it's the thing of, well, yes, but we're challenging you to think as adults and as parents and as kids. Um, whereas now, I don't know any, I don't know a kid that's going to grow up thinking, I have the transferable skill that I produced content that boils down to um i make trick shots with pieces of toast i get it and it's fun but what i think has happened is that a lot of people have been steered into that as opposed to what i think the spirit of youtube originally was which is hey like kind of like what you were saying about the, the idea of football like i say i was that kid at school you know i was a bit of a geek a bit of a nerd i could play football but i was never going to be the best at it but then you find other avenues like gaming was the avenue for me. I could I could play football through a game that got me into gaming. 
YouTube was a place where maybe you weren't popular or seen as particularly interesting or funny in the school ground or at, at college or whatever. But if you had an idea and you had to put time and effort into it and present it and, and give it some thought, it wouldn't matter who you were. It just, it's the content was how you were judged and it got successful whether or not you, you had a proclivity against it or for it. And I feel like we're steering away from that now when YouTube is, is a blank canvas, man. Which is any uh, any creator worth their salt wants just just give me a blank canvas and let me work, let me make you something, let me let me put a piece of myself into this and show you what's possible. And instead, I think people are being geared away from it again, just utilizing very simple human physiology, which is the dopamine hit of quick, easy, don't think, you know. But which, and the, th the weird thing about it for me is that again, your content goes against that. Your your content is very thoughtful. It's very um, well produced and slick, and a lot of it's evergreen. I can watch it 10, 15 times. And there's sometimes I'll get like some of the animations now. You put cues and hints and references that I'll pick up two or three times down the road, and I go, oh, I didn't notice that before. Especially with with um, you know some of the the comedic stuff that JJ brings in, some of the thoughtful stuff that Seb brings in. Originally, Alex, you know, he was maybe a bit more deadpan, and he was a bit easier to catch on the first first one. But I don't know. I feel like you guys embody that, and I I'm curious to find out how you'll continue to embody that in an age where people are invested to disenfranchise themselves from long form and stick to short form. I don't think they necessarily are. I just think short form is an option. I, I don't think it, I, I don't mean to suggest that it's inevitably going to take over. I don't know that it will do. I mean, I, I also think like there's a couple of like there's a couple of different things here. One is that you don't need to be inspired by everything, right? Mm. So like the not everything needs to needs to have that kind of intrinsic value to it. Mm. Uh, two, people have been saying forever. That like what kids are doing now is is like the end of. I know that's not exactly what you're saying, like so I'm being I'm being a little. It's a little conscious. bit. No, it's a little bit. That's fair. A, a, a tiny bit, and I do it as well. But like, it's an instinct, and um, and it's. I think it's because sometimes, and again, not applying it this to you, uh, but when I you know when I feel this way that oh why why do they do things like that now? It's because I don't understand it, uh, and you know I grew up as the kind of whatever the MTV generation with all music videos with like I don't know half naked people everywhere, <laughs> and it was like the, it's the end of history, and it's not, it's mm. not like you know that you just described YouTube, uh, YouTube promotes the content that we make. You found us because of that. And we make stuff which you're saying is 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 the opposite or the antithesis of 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 your description of like some of the the bad content, right? Uh, people have always found good stuff, like always throughout history. What was popular when I was a kid uh, was not like I didn't then. Um, I didn't, but you know, become exactly what my culture you would have thought academically defined me to be, and loads of people don't. Mm. And loads of people always, you know, people have always avoided that. There's the upside is there's so much good stuff, so much. The ratio, even if it the ratio is different, doesn't matter because the volume is enormous. And there are so many cool creators on YouTube doing amazing things, which have like loads of artistic integrity and are really funny and smart and intelligent and made in a way that. No one ever would have made that 10, 20 years ago. And it's, you know, it is a discovery tool for, for, for those people as well. It also, although we could argue all day about the kind of economic uh, uh, model or the elements of that, it is an opportunity for people to be independent as well. There are plenty of YouTubers who make more money uh, on YouTube or, uh, or um, as a result of, you know, various different diversified revenue streams because of their popularity on YouTube. 100%. That don't need to take these, uh, you know, big rip-off contracts with other massive pre-existing or historical companies. And that's amazing. Mm. That's like, it's so cool that that's the case. Obviously, they have a contract with Google, right? But like, you know, and it's in, in a way, it emancipates you from uh, from more traditional media. In another way, it ties you to, to a different form of it. So I'm not saying that you know, people are completely independent. Um, but I just, uh, you know, I fundamentally reject the notion uh, that uh, uh, that things will get worse because they because when it comes to creativity they do, it doesn't happen and actually the more uh, like oppression there is uh, you know 
I think historically it's plain to see that in, in, in countries and in specific places in time when there's been lots of um, societal or government uh, uh, for different forms of oppression or repression, um, art, the art is amazing. It always, it always breaks through. It's like why people talk about, you know, East Germany, uh, you know, before the fall of the Berlin Wall, like all this cool, amazing punk culture came from that. It's like why uh, you know, people talk about the, the the miners' strikes in the in the UK and all the way through uh, Maggie Thatcher and how all this, um, you know, all these amazing artists were born out of that. I think to a certain extent, a little bit of adversity is a good thing for artistic integrity. And um, if there's more and more and more, uh, you know, uh, shorts related content that is a bit more thoughtless and is kind of shoved down people's throat, you're just going to create cool as fuck people who've had that force down their throat as a child and don't want it like i didn't listen to all of the you know we talked before about like rejecting the kooks you know and i did that as a poser and as because you know i was whatever i want i was in search of something different but all the different things that i did find in, inspired me uh, and 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 i think if you were to take a kind of alien through what culture in the uk was between you know 1990 and 2010 in my formative years uh, you would you would put me through an algorithm and it expects me to come out as something entirely different to what i am like people cannot be contained man and like however impressive or important the youtube algorithm is people cannot be contained and will always make awesome stuff I mean, there's some wonderful points, and I do take a lot of what you're saying. Um, and we're probably entering a conversation that's far more existential and deep to have in the next two minutes before we wrap up. Um, and I agree with you because I was part of that, punk, that that sort of punk generation when I was growing up. I was a skater kid or the Grebo rather than the townie or the city boy. Um, however, I think though, the only way I would disagree with that is the way that the information is disattained. TV, yes, you're right, is passive. Um, but it required very in, a very limited interaction. This is all stuff that you're doing to hit. And that's where I think the, the discrepancy is. Um, but time will tell. It's one of the, you are right. And I take your point that you're right. I did find you and a lot of other people have found you. One point, uh, oh God, I had that number. Damn. Over a mil well over a million subscribers to date uh, on the uh, accumulative on uh, TIFO and TIFO IRL, which is fine. So I'll tell you what, two more questions and we'll end on a high because I've mm -hmm. brought the conversation down. Rocket League, explain. It's just the greatest video game of all time. I love God. it. I love playing a football video game where the ball isn't tied to your foot because I'm not a baby, yeah? And I can control the ball with a car because I'm not a baby. <laughs> but I'm they're bright colored and the ball is massive like a toddler's. Yeah, it's amazing, yeah. For adults, <laughs> it's for adults, that okay. game. I mean, I've tried it. I'm not shitting on it, but like... I'm so good at that game, Lil. I'm so good at it. Well, I played it for the first time with my brothers. I visited them in Australia after not seeing them for like four or five years, and I could kick their asses at any game at the time. Now, when I see them, like when I went there, sorry, and they introduced me to Rocket League, I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I'm playing it, and they are killing me, killing me at the game. And I'm like, who? What? Cars can't kick footballs. When I was playing football as a kid, you were told, stay away from the cars. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't kick footballs near cars. It's, it's, it, you can't do it. It's so I'm a rebel, Lauren, and I've always been taught to rebel against, uh, you know, received wisdom. And I'm doing that on a nightly basis now. Do you still, do you still play? Yeah. You've not been tempted by any of the more contemporary uh, battle royales or any of the... Um, mm. I forget what it's called. It's like the fighting game with Scooby, with Shaggy and Batman in it. I don't care about guns. I don't, I don't want to do guns or fighting, really. I just like cars and football. I just like car football. When like have cars. you ever I seen like Shaggy or Batman with a gun? I don't know. I assumed that there was, you know, there were going to be guns in the games you were talking about. You seem like a violent sort of guy, so I don't know. I just... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I seem like a violent sort of guy. I'm just well, saying oh, things about well, thank I you. I, See, I tell everyone, I tell you all perpetually, I'm a gangster, and none of you listen. None of you listen. Uh Anyways, but no, I, I, I just, I was curious because I, I, I've tried it. Um, uh, mm. I just can't. 
But you seem to really enjoy it. You've referenced it in a couple of your it's videos. Your last, you're wasting your last question. You oh, okay. Question. All right. Sorry. Last, my, if you want, got, I'll answer that one if you want. I've got one. So, okay. Like, All right. That's, that would be the last one. Because one last good, question. And I expect, on I expect the best answer yet out of you. Okay. No. Which is, no. Uh, do you know what? I'm not going to ask the joke and I'll ask a serious one. What do you want your legacy to be then? You've you've a started legacy. from you've started from 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 a position of of <laughs> you you didn't get a leg up in YouTube. There was no one that gave you backing initially. It's your idea. It's your baby. And you've grown it into this this wonderful thing, and yeah. like you're in the midst of it now. But like everything, there's going to come a point creatively or just from a personal perspective that you you you'll want to do something different or you'll want to explore new avenues because you you strike me as someone that doesn't like standing still longer than you have to you, you're the sort of person that at least from what i viewed of your career and what i've seen of the content you produced you that you you know when to call time like this is enough right let's do something different what do you want to be your legacy when it comes to all of the all of the projects that you've helmed when you're done with content creation what do you think you want your legacy to be i i would like to uh, attach um uh, mechanical legs to fish and try to introduce them to to the land mammals. Mm. You know, try to sort of um, introduce different um, species together, and different different categories of animal uh, together. Because I think one of the sad things about um, living on the land is uh, the lack of access to animals that live in the sea. And I think sure there's scuba diving equipment and there are various different uh diving schools you can go to but i think sort of on a on a kind of um a very broad level if there were more interaction between uh sea creatures and land animals i think that would be a fine legacy for me indeed i think people would really enjoy that as a legacy i asked you what your legacy would be not what your pitch for a rick and morty episode would be that would be a good Rick and Morty episode, wouldn't it? It would be a very I'm Land and a big fish. big big Rick and Morty fan, so uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd still watch it. But come on, I tell like... you what, I'll answer that question in a different way. Go what, for it. What, what would I like my legacy to be? I would like people to remember me as the writer of Rick and Morty because that would be cool, right? That, is, that would be such a cool legacy. Dan Harm, that guy's got a legacy, huh? Rick and Morty, wow. It's, it's, amazing, pr isn't it's it? pretty impressive, but you you have a legacy in animation now, and you have an. Uh, yeah. Not me. What I should do is I should say I should uh, reference the, the animators because they never get talked about. They they, they don't. We I was going to ask cover. you: uh, Are you as jealous of of Alice of her skills as Ian McIntosh is as jealous of you and your clear and obvious youthfulness? I'm as jealous of Alice's skills as Alice is jealous of mine. You know, <laughs> let's, let's say that. Um, which is uh, which is to say a, a great deal. Uh, you know, Alice is our managing illustrator, not my sister, I should say, because people when we first started working here, people thought she was my wife. We had to clear that up. Um, but uh, other than Alice, you know, we've got we've got uh, Philippe Fenner, Craig Silcock, Henry Cook, Marco Bevilacqua. What a name, huh? These guys, some of the top illustrators out there. And there's also videographers. Don, yeah, Don, the, uns the unspoken Don, unsung Don, we should say, and Jamie working real hard all the time. These are so many people here that you don't see on the cameras that get the very little credit. Um, in many ways, I think they're my legacy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I will, I will live on in the lives of my employees. Uh, well, I can speak to the fact that Philippe, and uh, Henry, who I've interacted with on the old uh, Twitter DMs, both both lovely gentlemen, and uh, both very passionate about what they do and love what they do, and that speaks to uh, a fostered culture of excellence yeah, yeah. at the TFO yeah. offices. Mm. I, I got my two questions in, so um, I, I I feel like I just have a one last quick bonus question. Just how much do I owe you for my parody? I feel like for licensing oh, and for uh, for taxation purposes, I should get the figure now before I have to. Uh, it's just ticked over 30,000. 30,000? 30,000 views. Pounds. Yeah, a million pounds a million for 30,000 views. For my likeness, yeah. I, it's very impressive. I mean, it's... it's was it though? I feel like I, I gave good. I gave the worst performance of the world, not only with you, but Alex and no. Seb, and the only what one I came I'll close to was you, JJ. What I'll say to you is that is, is that um, 
with the exception of JJ, for obvious reasons. Uh, everyone else, when they heard it, they thought, I don't sound like that, but everyone else, he's done really well. All of us thought that, and that's just because of our warped perception of how we sound. Uh, so I think you did a very good job, a fine job. If, if anyone is interested at all, I've been doing impressions of you guys for months, months, and I was just doing it for fun because I just listened to the beginning of the podcast and go, hello. And I just thought one day I was like, fuck this, let's just, let's just put it together as a I'm higher than my voice, though. But like, here's the thing come you come had a come very. On very noticeable cadence when you introduce the show for a while you've diversified it up a little bit now where every show there's been times where i'm fully expecting the hello and welcome to the tifa podcast and i'm now joined by you know it was it there's a but but a but 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 to the speech whereas now it's it's more uh you seem quite eager to get down to business these days so there's a there's a right jj just for fuck's sake just get on with it and like which is still fun because some of the exacerbation is fun sometimes but i know that comes from a position of hard work alex was the easiest alex was just yeah. you just put yourself in the mind of what would eeyore do if he knew how to swear easy 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 yeah your alex, your alex was very good well was very good. he was he was the easiest channel poor seb seb just technical difficulties and uh jj loud noises many many loud noises he hadn't he hadn't quite and got into this weird sean connery response mechanism that he's now developed i don't know where that's come from i know he's scottish by the way but it's come from somewhere and i don't know where it's come from but um but yeah very odd so yeah so listen um you have a uh, a life to lead i presume so uh I, I do i better let you go so just one last thing where can people find you where can people uh buy merch of some description and uh, is there oh, a no. like a monthly subscription service that you would like people to be aware of generally speaking i don't think so no, no. um no. nice shirt by the way that's a lovely the, the logo Thanks. in particular is really i lovely. don't think there is any um subscription service that mm. people should should subscribe to but uh no need to buy anything don't buy anything it's all there for free you know so just watch it if you want and it... otherwise uh don't oh man i i was i've pulled up the damn tifo app in order to plug it arsenal are one one damn it are arsenal do... playing arsenal are playing right now uh, yeah okay damn well... you damn you athletic bringing me bad news on the can minute I, minute can by I minute. give you some feedback as a podcast host? Oh God, please! Of, you're the you're the master. Of, and this is people. still on the podcast, isn't it? This is still we're still. I will edit anything out that makes me look terrible. No, no, so keep this in. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm being told what I have to keep in. Wrap it up. <laughs> wrap it up. As a podcast, it's very important as a podcast, <laughs> to know. Like you said earlier, you praise me for knowing when something's done. Yes, yeah? very much. And so. I feel like you have missed. You've missed the bit where it was done. Okay. Before. I'm, when you looked I'm, at your phone, yeah. that was your instinct to go. This is boring. Now I'm bored myself. No, I was. I'm. I'm I know. I was plugging the and the no, no, app. No. I'm. I'm. I'm Let's marketing. Said instead. I'm marketing. And, uh, so what do you, have you got a spiel at the end? What do you say? Is it done? What would you say? Thanks to the guests. I, I'm to overly Joe Devine yeah for coming on the podcast, and I'm Lorn Risley. Risley, you got my first and last names right. God, I'm I love Lorne you, Risley. This is the Halcyon show. And now it's over. Goodbye forever. Yeah. I am going to end it there because that's way too funny not to. But...